Hello, we're group one, and our project is on mechanical birds or ornithopters. I'm Jackson Fabley, this is Alexander Piedra, and this is Cindy Vargas. Uh, the purpose of our project was to conduct a literature survey on uh, past ornithopters and mechanical birds, to also conduct a historical review of the mechanisms traditionally used in ornithopters, and to design and conduct a mechanical analysis of the systems required to make ornithopters fly. What is an ornithopter? An ornithopter is a flying device that flies by flapping wings. Very similarly to a bird, it produces both thrust and lift by flapping its wings. They're usually lightweight and compact, and they mimic anatomy of birds very similarly. The term ornithopter is derived by the Greek words ornithos, representing bird, and pteron, representing wing. And although ornithopters are fairly energy efficient, similar to how birds can sustain long flights, they're, they can be complicated to design since the intricate components are difficult to create. Bird flight is intricate and so, so birds use several tools to maximize their flight effectiveness. An example is the, their feathers and how they manipulate them. On downward strokes, their feathers overlay with one another and cuff the air beneath their wings. And on upward strokes, they reduce air resistance by separating and allow air, air flow between their feathers. They also flare the tips of the, the feathers on the tips of their wings to create winglets that also reduce air drag and resistance. Um, the flapping motion of a bird also isn't just simply an up and down motion, it's almost an elliptical motion, which is more complicated, but it develops, allows the bird to develop thrust and lift on a, a flap rather than just one. For the history of ornithopters, the first depiction of one was in 1000 BC and was seen in a carving from an ancient, ancient Assyrians. They, the Greek story and of the Dallas and Icarus is one example of many tales and myths that describe men creating ornithopters to attempt flight. Several men attempted flight by strapping wings and feathers to their arms and obviously did not have much success. During the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci created an ornithopter that attempted to maximize the output of a man, of a man controlling the machine. It did not, it was not successful, but it was a start for effective ornithopters. The first unmanned ornithopter created was in 1871 by Joubert, and it was powered by a simple rubber band, a spun rubber band that when released would rotate several components, replicating a flapping bird, a flapping motion of, a, of wings on a bird. It was simple enough to become a toy in 1889, and as far as manned ornithopters go, the first official functioning one was in 1929, created by Alexander Lebesgue, and although it did not sustain a very long flight, it was successful. People began to realize that ornithopters could not consistently and steadily be manned by manned and powered by men, so they applied engines and motors to power them. An example is in 1942, Albert Smith used a motorcycle engine to power his ornithopter with significant success. So the flapping wing model consists of two working cycles, the downward, the downstroke motion and the upstroke motion. So um, as a stretched flapping wing uh, cuts through the air, it works the same as an airplane. So as the wing cuts through the air, the air on top of it has a lower pressure and higher velocity, and the air underneath it has a higher pressure and lower velocity. This differential pressure is what creates lift. As um, the bird or the ornithopter uh, creates the downstroke motion, the air is compressed very quickly, so that accelerates the, the velocity of the air, and this creates maximum lift and thrust for the wing. Uh, during the upstroke motion, the wing, uh, uh, the wing creates less lift, but since the ends of the of the wing are are twisted, it creates enough thrust to stay in the air. Um, one of the important components of uh, ornithopter design is wings. So lift and thrust are very dependent on the changes of the wing shape. Uh, two traditional um, wing designs are are as follows: the flapping wing uh, design consists of one wing on either side of the fuselage. The second one is a four clapping wing, which is two wings on either side of the fuselage. This type of design helps to cancel out the oscillations created by the wings. The 
other component is uh, the control, the directional control scheme. So flapping wings create vibrations in the mechanism, so a tail is added at the end to maintain balance. Three of the tails that are used traditionally are the static tail, which, pre, uh, which is the late, least controllable one, the rudder tail, which consists of a vertical stabilizer, which helps create yaw. So this basically helps the vehicle move uh, left and right. And the last one is the rudder vader tail, which is also known as the V-tail. So two fins are angled at, in the back, and this helps um, with yaw and pitch. So again, it helps uh, move the vehicle left and right and up and down. The last component of the design is the design mechanism. Um, most designs are comprised of four bar linkages. The most popular ones are the front mounted double push rod, the parallel single crank, and the single crank mechanism. Um, since the topic of order factors is still relatively new, it's imperative to come up with um, new updates on metha um, mathematical theories uh, so we can come up with new models and information on bird flight mechanics. Um, it's also important to um, develop better ways of the driving mechanisms for the ornith ornithopter um, to come up with a way to fly silently and to manufacture artificial wings for such side flight. For our conceptual design, we're utilizing an ornithopter wing with three degrees of freedom. Traditional ornithopters have two degrees of freedom, so flapping about the body axis and rotation about the leading edge to introduce angle of attack. Um, we chose a three degree of freedom rotational joint in the tip segment of the wing to allow sweep adjustment as well. When birds fly, they tend to extend their wings forward on the downstroke. This increases the apparent velocity of the wind, which increases the pressure differential and thus the thrust and the lift generated by the wing. Um, because we're controlling the sweep of the wing in real time during our downstroke, we can actually produce differing amounts of uh, thrust or lift. We can then use this to augment control in addition to the tail by using differential thrust or differential lift on each side of the ornithopter. One of the biggest innovations that we had is in our control linkages. Controlling a multiple degree of freedom system for an ornithopter in order to have controllable flight is very difficult. Typically, we use rigid members and four bar linkages, as Cindy said before. Uh, for our design, we have a single uh, rigid control mechanism that flaps the wing and then multiple um, tension elements that apprehend the twist angle of the wing. As the wing moves on its downstroke, the higher pressure on the bottom of the wing will tend to try to rotate the wing forward. This motion is apprehended by the control line here, which stops it at the preferred angle of attack. On the upstroke, as the wing comes back up, there's more pressure on the top side of the wing, which tries to rotate it downward. This is again apprehended by the same control line. This allows us to control the sweep and the angle of attack for each position on the uh, stroke of the wing for upstroke and downstroke. We also wanted to use slats or a slotted airfoil uh, for the tip segment. Most modern airliners use something called Fowler flaps, which separate the total wing length from here to here into multiple airfoils so that you have one in the back and one in the front. What this does is it allows the flow to stay attached for more of the airfoil's total length. Generally what happens for high camber airfoils at uh, low speeds and high angle of attacks is the flow will go over the leading edge and then separate from the surface of the airfoil leading to a, a lot of turbulence. By introducing a slat here where the airfoil, or the airfoil can go from the bottom surface to the top surface of the airfoils allows flow to stay attached for longer which reduces stall. It also produces more thrust and more lift for the same airspeed at less drag. This is a top view schematic of our proposed design which mimics feathers as Alex was talking about. On the upstroke, because of the angle of attack of the wing, air can flow between the slots, which reduces air resistance. On the downstroke, when the camber is very high, or when the angle of attack is very high, it allows flow from the bottom surface of the wing to the top surface, which increases efficiency, reduces uh, tip vortex drag, and keeps flow attached for longer. In conclusion, ornithopters are kind of weird. They are generally powered by rotational uh, motors, such as the motors that drive propellers in regular airplanes. However, rotational engines are not very well suited to control the very complex motions of ornithopters. For this reason, most fixed, plane, most fixed wing aircraft uh, with rotary engines are preferred over ornithopters. Ornithopters fill a niche role in surveillance and observation where you may want a craft that looks and acts like a bird. Because of this, they're relatively small and the scale is also relatively small. The intended loads and uh, applications are not as large as regular planes.
Optimization of ornithopters for small-scale bird mimicking use cases is thus the preferred um, use case. Utilizing control lines instead of rigid linkages was also very important for our design as it reduces the total uh, weight and allows a more complex joint mechanism. The wingtip slot and flap design produces more lift and thrust for a given drag at lower uh, velocities. There are some drawbacks for our design though. Because of the complex joint in the tip segment of the wing, our airfoil ends up being disjointed. So you have a separate segment for the tip of the wing and the main segment of the wing. This can be combated by using a flexible covering in between the two. Uh, we also have the added complexity of the joints where the wings rotate, uh, which is a two degree of freedom joint for the root and a three degree of freedom joint for the tip. Uh, we also have limited application size and load because of the way we control our wing. Because we're using essentially ropes or control lines, the tension elements can only withstand so much weight, which limits the total size of our application. Thank you.